Uh, and honestly, this is one of those things that when, uh, you know, last week during during the live stream that I do, that I do on Fridays, uh, a good friend of mine and a former guest of the show, Jay Jackson, uh, he asked me, you know, we, we know these parties are corrupt. We know what these parties are doing. Uh, but what's the alternative here? You know, where where are we supposed to go? You know, the Democratic Party is screwing us over. The Republican Party doesn't want uh, anything to do with with people like us. So where are we supposed to go? Uh, and my answer to him is this is it's the People's Party um, or or the Socialist Alternative Party or the Green Party. Look for anything different than than, uh, you know, uh, the, the Democrats and the Republicans. They are not the be all end all of political discussion, of political thought. You you can't take the you can't be a party that champions diversity as much as the Democrats honestly do and claim that there's only two sides to the argument. If you champion diversity as much as the, this party does, then you would champion more parties coming in. You would champion the Green Party getting ballot access. You would champion the People's Party getting ballot access. You would pan cha champion uh, the Socialist Alternative Party getting ballot access. And you would ha have them be on the debate stage. You would make that an equal and just argument. That's not the argument the Democrats are making. They're, again, it becomes another point going back to the dispatch for today, for this episode, is that they're using diversity, they're using identity politics as a scapegoat to make themselves look better than what they are. That that corporatism somehow, you know, is softened and, and isn't as evil if it's if it's committed by a black person. Or if if an Indian woman is in charge of the budgets that if we spend it on war, then it's a nice war. You know, whatever whatever bullshit they want to throw out there. And again, that's that's my point is is if if you are like the hundreds and millions of people who have been disenfranchised by the duopoly by both parties where you are forced to make a vote for someone you objectively oppose your entire viewpoint is the opposition of this individual then having more parties clears that up having ranked choice voting immediately clears that up. Ranked choice voting is actually even more democratic than the process we have now. It's a lot easier. Various countries use it, and it makes sure that, you know, no no voter's voice goes unheard. It's a much better, much better process than what we have now. Um, so that's what I always tell people is you have options if electoral politics is your thing. It's not my thing. I I think most of electoral politics, like the People's Party is one of the very small little things that gives me hope in terms of electoral politics. Um, but for the most part, you know, I, I, I very much think that the voting process is, is so rigged and so broken and so complicated. Um, and it's designed that way that that it's it's impossible to get equality from that. And you don't defeat fascism at the ballot box. That's not how fascism works. So, again, you know, my recommendation to people who, who feel very stuck, who feel like they don't have representation and they don't know where to go and they feel like they're trapped in some sort of an abusive relationship with the Democratic Party, um, go to the People's Party. Register as uh, an independent. Register as unaffiliated. Register as a green or a libertarian, you know, or a socialist alternative. If those parties aren't available, go unaffiliated, go independent. Tell the part, tell this Democrat, if there was a, if there was a movement of some kind, right, of where hundreds and millions of people decided that they are going to change their registration across the country, don't you think the Democrats would notice that hundreds and thousands of people all of a sudden decided that they're no longer going to be Democrats. And they would go, holy fuck, what just happened? And we have all of this year to do that, and part of next year to do that as well. And then demand that if you, if you want us to be a part of your electoral process, if you don't want to see low voter turnouts again, to add more parties. 
to let ballot access for the Greens, for the People's Party, for Libertarians, for Socialist Alternative. Let those people vote. My guess is they will they will do exactly what they did with the Force to Vote movement, which is they will come up with every excuse in the book to not want to do something like that. It's not the right time. We ha- well, we just got the position in the Senate. Let us work our let us do our jobs. And it's like we've been you've been there. We've been asking you to and you've declined us every time. Now it's time for you to or you know the 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 concern for them should be what happens when the left does what the right did. I doubt if the left decides to march on the Capitol, it'll be with guns and a pipe bomb, and you 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 bet your ass that there'll be a whole lot more cops and National Guard there. But at least at least you you have a valid argument at that point to say we r- removed our registration from this party and we told you that we don't. We, we, we're demanding more parties, and if you don't give us that, then, then we write them in, right? The, you do a write-in campaign. You find out who the socialist alternative candidate could be in your, in your uh, districts and, and, and states and counties and all that sort of stuff, and, and there's a write-in campaign that gets started. But, but, you know, we all complain about politicians not having the political will, but there's also something to be said about uh, the citizens not having the will to make that kind of a change. Yes, change is scary. There's an awkward transition time. Nobody likes our teenage years. Nobody wants to be. No, nobody ex- enjoyed sitting in a classroom and randomly getting a boner and then having to go up to uh, you know to to write cursive on the board. Nobody enjoys that shit. It's a transition. Then you get older and then you figure out how to control boners and and you know you're not sitting at a bar and you see a a good looking individual and and just get a random erection you're like okay cool but you know put that in the that's nobody likes to tr- but we're going to have to go through that awkward boner transition when it comes to electoral politics that's going to happen and we're we're going to have to deal with it nobody nobody tries to get out of their teenage years that's impossible like that's not how biology works and that's not how you become an adult right <laughs> so now is the time for america to transition to becoming an adult we're on that cusp of of uh, of being a teenager, and and now you can you know figure out how to maintain control of your boners or lady boners. But you who you know I'm crossing all I'm using the gender I'm using boners as as a for everybody. It's so we're gonna need to do that, and I think I think the citizenship needs to. Uh, to, to be brave, because the reality is that very likely is that you're not alone. None of us are alone in all of this. We have each other, and we will um, we will take care of each other. You know, that's, that's the, I think that's the ultimate lesson in this, is, is the system is, is manufactured its way to make it seem like you're by yourself. Um, but the reality is that you are not by yourself. Uh, the reality is that there is a lot of people who who believe the same way you, who think and believe the same things you do, and you don't know who they are because you. It's been, it, the system is designed to to make you isolated. I mean, Madison said that in one of the Federalist Papers is to make this country so huge that people can't come together. Right and and rally around and and really really dissent with true organization and now with with the internet it's it is possible to do something like that, um, and with the internet I think it's it's I mean I I feel alienated sometimes you know when I'm when I'm sitting around with a group of people and they and they chastise me I felt that way in college when I was starting to form some of the belief systems that I did I felt very alone felt very you know. I felt like no one understood wh- what my point of view or perspective is and that I was way too much for other people. And now I know that I'm I I know even though those feelings do come back and they do and they uh, I mean I had feelings like that earlier this week uh where that I'm too much and I'm alone and no one really gets my 
point of view or or, or where I'm coming from or, or why I stand for the things that I stand for and, and you know, maybe I'm too extreme or, or whatever the thing was, right? But I, but I know I'm not. Intellectually, I'm able to discern that I'm not, but the, sometimes the emotion outweighs the intellect and you kind of have to process it. But the reality is that we're not alone. You know, a lot of us, a lot of us feel that frustration of where are we supposed to go now? We, we feel betrayed by the Democrats. We feel betrayed by the Republicans. Well, there's various options. Get together with other like-minded people and say, well, what do we do? How, how do we make electoral politics work for us? So uh, that's my little little ray of hope. Again, um, go to peoplesparty.org if you're interested in the, in the, uh, the People's Party. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode. If you are a first-time listener, first-time viewer, uh, I hope you become a continuing listener and viewer, a returning listener and viewer. Uh, make sure you hit subscribe, make sure you like it, and make sure you share this podcast because often content like this, especially one that covers anti-establishment topics, are not shown to as many people as you would think. Uh, they are often censored by things like Facebook, YouTube, um, Twitter, things of that sort. So if you do listen to this and you do enjoy this this podcast, uh, please do hit the share button and, and write a review. Uh, leave a comment. I usually respond to those. Uh, a great Another great way to, to help this show if you are on stable financial ground is to make a one-time contribution or become a sustaining member over at krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, if you become a sustaining member, you get free tickets to live virtual stand-up comedy shows. And when touring comes back, you'll get tickets to my live shows when I come through your city. Uh, you also get bonus stand-up comedy content and early access to longer in-depth episodes of Forkful of Noodles before they're released out to the the general public, so, so it would seem. Um, while you're on my website, you can also download my stand-up comedy albums. I have a variety of different stand-up comedy albums, the most recent of which is called Politely Angry, uh, where I talk about capitalism and religion and corporatism, the prison industrial complex, and of course, I also take, make fun of and shit on Jeff Bezos, because why not? I think that dude needs to be taken down a couple pegs. So if you enjoy that kind of comedy, then you will probably enjoy my stand-up comedy albums as well. Uh, once again, the website is krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A dot com. Thank you so much.